been working our way through the basics of Vector with CorelDRAW and in this session we're going to get started with some of the new tools that are only available in CorelDRAW X6 and that would be our Smear, Repel, Attract and Twirl tools. I'm going to go ahead and get started with these tools just by looking at how they work working with a simple ellipse. Go over here to my ellipse tool, I'll hold down shift and control and create a perfect ellipse. The next thing I'll do is come over here to my shape tool and come down to smear. You notice when I select that tool my properties bar changes to the smear tool. Now we've got a couple of different settings we can set here. We can set our nib radius. You can left click, hold down and push that up and that'll give you a bigger nib or you can hold down shift and do it right in your workspace pushing your mouse forward and backwards. We have a pressure setting here we could be at 100% pressure or it could be at 1% pressure. You'll notice that if I'm at a very low pressure, I have little effect on my graphic. However, if I'm up to say 100% pressure, I start to have much more dramatic effect on my graphic or my objects in draw. We'll go back to a perfect circle. It's shift control Z to redo the creation of that ellipse. We have a pen setting here. I'm working with a mouse so I won't deal with that. We've got a smooth smear and we've got a pointy smear. Set at 100, we'll start pulling out and see what a smooth smear does and that just starts pulling that out. If we go with a pointy smear, it starts to bring it to a point. As you can see there, we'll hit Control Z and go back. Also, we want to be aware of the fact that the way in which we start pulling or manipulating our graphics really depends on where our nib is in relation to the objects we're working with when we start to make an effect. For example, if I start here from the outside with 100% pressure and pull, I don't get a lot of effect. But if I start from the inside and pull, I get a lot of effect. Hit Control Z and go back. Let's take a look at some of the other tools here. We'll create a simple rectangle and see what some of these other tools do. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select the Attract tool and that if we apply that here you can see what it does is it starts to bring objects together now if I was drawing say I wanted to draw a piece of bubble gum wrapped inside of a wrapper I can start with this tool and bring that in as you can see there and then just bring some vector in here to make that effect I might want to start in something like this here and something like this here and then I could pull these nodes out and make it look like it was a piece of bubblegum and put a logo on it. I'll hit Control Z here, go back. I want to bring this down to about 6 and we'll see that we get much less effect as we bring our pressure down. Now I could go from my Attract to my Repel out here on the outside and bring that back out. Let's take a look at the Twirl tool. So Attract will pull things together, repel will push things out, and twirl will spin things. As you can see right there. Now that's a lot of twirl. If you want less twirl, go over here and bring your pressure down in your properties bar and you'll get less twirl. Now if you were drawing say a water scene or something like that, you could use that tool. Now looking at how all of this works, what I want to do is take some clip art and we'll just take a quick look at how we can do some dynamic editing with this. I've got a skull here in the design base. I'm just going to double click this and I'm going to import into current document. Now that's in my document. Go ahead and click on that and select that. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my design base. I'm going to move this skull down here and we'll take a look at how we can edit this. Now if you've got art assets around clip art and things like this, these tools are going to be very powerful for you because you can do some very dynamic editing of clip art and standard vector graphics and draw with these tools. Let's take a look at the smear tool here first. I'm going to come down here to the smear tool and I'm just going to go ahead and resize this a bit. I'm going to come to this eye and pull this down. I'm going to do the same here and I'm going to change the look on his face from let's say kind of common to a little bit more sinister like he's got his eyes and brows beating down as you can see there now normally if I had to do that with shaping and with the shape tool and lines and nodes I've been here for quite a while I just did that in a matter of seconds now if I want to make some other adjustments here I can go to say the twirl tool and we'll go ahead and make this quite a bit bigger 
and I'm going to change this here. I've got 11 here. I could change my direction here, but I'm going to go with this direction. But I'm going to bring this down in pressure to about 6, and then just click there, and you can see what we've done. Now see here on this side, I don't want to go that way. I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'm going to change my direction on this side to bring that back down in like that. Now with that done, I can go back to my smear tool and pull these eyes out even more here on the side. Go ahead and resize here just a little bit and we'll pull this up here just to make sure it matches with what's going on with the other eye. And we can resize here a little bit more and pull out some more here. Click and we'll pull in here and pull in here. So here I've been able to radically change the expression on the face of this skull literally in a matter of seconds working with the smear tool. I'm going to double click and bring this skull in again. Import to current document. Go ahead and minimize my design base. And click here. There we go. And you can see the change that we've made working with the smear tool. This skull looks much more sinister now. I could do a lot more tweaking with this, and we've got extensive tutorials on the getting started with the CorelDRAW X upgrade series at advancedtshirts.com relating to the smear tool and how to work with it. And if you want to get into some more advanced training with that, go check out the other X6 training series on advancedtshirts.com. So we'll go ahead and wrap here with our smear twirl, attract, and repel tools, and we'll continue in our next session.